Hi guys! So in this video I'm going to be doing a modification to the Easy UHF standard antenna. Now this is actually a little tweak that's come about from flying my Immersion RC Zugong V2 Pro. As part of doing some of this testing I've been advising Immersion RC in regards to some issues that they've been experiencing with gimbals with their customers. Um, and as part of the back and forth, um, Mr Anthony Cake, he of Immersion RC themselves, uh, saw one of my test videos and he noticed on the OSD that my RSSI was actually quite low so there was obviously quite a large amount of signal noise interference coming in and that meant that I was only getting about two kilometers maximum whilst using the high power output on the 43 megahertz I was experiencing probably about 1.2 kilometers on the UK firmware which of course uses a, uh, a slightly lower feed however I wanted to test to see whether or not it would go further so I put it on the uh, the non UK firmware and uh, took it out and managed to get about two kilometers with it uh, it's believed it should be able to do much more than that and this little tweak here hopefully will create that um, possibility. So the reason that I've got actually these problems with the RSSI feed is for the fact that the Zugong is currently fitted with a uh, DJI NASA and the NASA is a very noisy flight controller so when you're in close proximity to it with Easy UHF it's quite common for there to be some interference. What this modification does is it basically creates a dipole antenna with one of the existing antenna and it will give some uh, signal noise reduction basically. I'm not going to pretend to know the details of it, I'm going purely on what Anthony has said. But basically it should reduce the noise and give a 10 decibel plus boost in the actual signal. So with that let's just talk about the modification itself. All we're going to do um, is we're going to take one of these antennas off here and as you can see we've got the SMA connector the gold plated ending on that then we've got the standard length antenna here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a length of this which is bike cable this is 1.5 millimeter standard galvanized steel bike cable um, I say bike cable this is for uh, you know mountain bikes road bikes basically you know gears it's a gear cable a standard brake cable um, but you need to make sure it's galvanized steel because we are going to be soldering to it so if you use stainless steel you're going to find that that's much harder to do um, so we're going to take a length of that which is going to be the exact length of the existing antenna and then all we're going to do is we're going to solder it onto the end here just to this side panel here so it goes out and it goes in the opposite direction. Basically what that's going to do once we've done some heat shrink is that's going to give us some interference shielding um, and in theory it's going to improve our range. So I'm going into this very much blind as I say. So um, I'm going to give it a shot. Now the only advice I've been given from Anthony um, is to make sure that we tin both the cable itself first and also the connector and we don't want to get this connector too hot because if you look in there there are nylon inserts and little uh, I think there's a little rubber seal as well potentially so you don't want to melt that but because it's gold connected it's going to heat up very quickly so we've got to be uh, quite careful with the way we do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length of cable now if you are going to do this project what I would suggest you do for the sake of what was 12 quid I think get yourself a decent set of cable cutters that's going to allow you to chop this cable into a, a very nice clean end rather than having a sort of a haggard end if you just use standard bolt cutters um, or wire cutters you're going to find that this stuff's actually quite hard to get through so uh, my advice there I think this was I'm say 12 quid off Amazon um, and the other thing that I'm uh, going to do uh, which is a slight take on this theme is that because of course the Zugong is very portable and I want to keep it portable what I want to be able to do rather than having this huge long great big antenna that I've got to store somewhere is I'm actually going to remain make this bottom part removable so the way that I'm going to do that is very simple I'm going to take this little 2.5 millimeter bullet and I'm going to solder that to the side and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the actual cable into the end of this bullet connector thus meaning I can just slide it in place there and that will give me the antenna so I've got to bear in mind the length of this so I'm going to include this in the actual length as well uh, do the soldering and we'll see how it comes out 
Okay, so step one is going to be measuring out the length of cable. Um, I've cut this down so I'm not using the entire reel, but this isn't actually going to be the final length of it. Um, and because I'm going to be using this bullet connectors, um, then I'm going to include these in the actual length of the cable. Um, this is probably going to drop the signal strength a little tiny bit, but hopefully it's uh, not going to compromise it too much. We will see, and obviously if it doesn't, then I can just desolder it. That's not a major problem. Um, if you are going to do this yourself, all you need to do, if you're not going to use the bullet connector idea, then all you want to do is you just want to literally take your antenna as it is, get your length of cable, work it out like that, mark there, and then give it a snip. Simple as that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to basically include the bullet connector which is going to be soldered about here and then I'm also going to include the other end of the bullet connector so I'm going to plug them in like so cable is going to be like this so basically my overall length of cable is therefore going to be about there. So with that I shall hold my finger on there, grab my wire cutters, and snip. Double check because I've got plenty of this cable, should it not be perfect. And there we go, absolutely fine. So that's all good there. So now, next thing we want to do is we want to pre tin everything. So I'm going to pre tin the bullet connector and I'm going to pre tin the top of this uh, SMA connector as well. Okay, so what we want to do get our soldering iron. I'm using a temperature controlled soldering iron at quite a high heat. 440 degrees at the moment so I need to be a bit careful of that and I'm just going to heat up this little bullet and put a decent sized glob of solder on there let's just zoom in a little bit and then we need to do the same just here and what I'm actually going to do to make sure the heat goes where I want it, I've got some uh, rosin flux pen. I'm just going to give it a little mark there, and that's going to channel where the heat for the solder is going to be. And there's a glob onto the top of there. So, a pair of pliers in hand because this thing's going to get pretty hot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually heat the solder on the bullet up first, and then touch that against the solder on the SMA connector just to heat it up. And now we are joined. So the final thing that we need to do solder wise is we need to get the wire itself into the end of the bullet. So first thing I'm going to do there is I'm just going to bung the bullet connector into my little helping hands here and I'm also going to put the end of the wire in there as well so we can tin the wire Okay, and then it's just a case of actually filling, putting the wire into the connector. So yeah, not the neatest of jobs, but I now have a bullet connector with my wire coming out of it. So final 
stage of this is going to be to put some heat shrink over all of this keep it nice and wrapped up and then it's going to be good to go so just a length of 1.5mm heat shrink is what I'm going to be using slide it down on top of there push it up against the solder joint there and then what I'm going to do is use a slightly larger 3 mil one and I'm going to slide that over the top of it and shrink all of that down and there we go the final result if I hold it up here if you can just about see that fairly straightforward really piece of wire wrapped in heat shrink but with the little bullet connector on there so I now grab my SMA connector I can now plug that in and we have ourselves what in theory is a dipole antenna so the real test now is going to be to take it out and give it a test now when considering the um, Zugong frame for this the other thing that you've got to bear in mind if you're like me and you're using a diversity receiver of course you've got if we take this off we've got one that's going to be going out this way and then we've got another one that's going to be up or, or at least down now the one that's going up or down if you put a dipole on that problem is of course when you come into land you're going to find problems because it's going to be in the way um, so what I'm going to do to begin with first test is going to be using the diversity transmitter this is just going to be the one that goes horizontally so that's probably the one that's going to pick up most of the um, the signal anyway given that my transmitter will have an upright antenna so there's going to be the crossing points obviously on a plane it's much more important to have that kind of movement where you're going swinging from left to right and you've got the 90 degree angle on something like a uh, an airframe that's on a multi-rotor of course you're doing much less of that uh, especially if you're doing videoing and stuff like that so there's much less likelihood of it so uh, anyway we're going to give that a go see how it goes obviously if this doesn't improve the situation I've got the option of creating a, a second one and um, trying to work out some way of, uh, of housing it possibly but I think this should uh, should be should work quite well so uh, that's how you do it like I say very simple and that's uh, thanks to Anthony from Immersion RC for this suggestion let's give it a test and uh, we'll see how it goes so on to the actual testing to see whether or not this modification has done anything uh, both flights done over the same bit of ground um, I did both flights at the same time fairly late on in the day because frankly the wind was just howling way too much before that and I wanted it to be a relatively fair test with some of the other stuff I was testing as well um, the picture unfortunately is a little bit dark so I apologize for that but most importantly you can see the OSD the flight on the left hand side is with it completely stock so that is using the non UK firmware 433 MHz with the standard antenna and then on the right you have the new modified antenna now the key features here obviously I've circled in red both of the numbers to look for because I'm using a diversity receiver you can actually see there are two RSSI numbers we've got one on the left and one in the circle on both images that's because each one of those numbers corresponds to that particular antenna or that particular receiver because there's actually two receivers in the diversity receiver so the key for us is making sure that the numbers on the right hand screen stay lower than they do on the left hand screen now I'm flying this with the stock antenna the easy UHF stock antenna antenna on the transmitter so there's some improvements that I can make on that I can get one of these um, these diamond ones slightly larger whip antenna um, but as you can see as we're now getting a little bit further out as we're sort of getting a couple of hundred meters away you can see already that on the right hand screen the uh, the signal the RSSI signal is significantly lower already than it is on the left hand which is a good thing low is good so we want to keep that figure as low as possible so what I'll do now is I'll fast forward it a little bit until we get a little bit further away until we get nearer the two kilometers range and we'll see how the two compare then So at this point in time, we're coming up to what I call the sort of datum point for me. This is the 1.6, 1.7 kilometer mark. You'll see on the right hand side, I've just gone over the 1.6 kilometer mark. And on the left hand side, I'm just about to start approaching it. This was kind of the point where I was finding that I was hitting the return to home mode. And you'll see on the left hand side, when the alarm signal pokes up in front of you on the OSD, that's actually it saying, hang on, I've lost signal. I'm going to go into return to home mode. You will see it in a moment on the right 
right hand screen however that's actually the alarm signaling that I've gone over the two kilometer mark and you'll see the actual distance two kilometer underneath the red circle actually flashing to indicate that these are nice features of the Zugong and the OSD itself so you can actually have these alarms set and you can change them within the software. So as you can see now I'm two kilometers away on the right hand screen with the dipole antenna. Um, I'm only at 58 just about 5860 on the RSSI whereas on the left hand screen I'm only at 1.6 kilometers and as I yaw around now you'll see that my RSSI is going all the way up to the high 80s anything over 90 and that's where the alarm bells start ringing and that's where the return to home and failsafe kicks in there you see the alarm kicking in there and that's actually flashing on the RSSI telling me that my signal is too weak and that actually it's dropped down. Now there are some elements that will affect this of course. Um, I've got my receiver mounted at the back of the Zugong. You'll see now on the right hand side because I've yawed back around so I'm headed back home actually the RSSI is much higher because of this. Now the reason for that is of course the signal is being blocked quite dramatically by the frame itself because I've just done a slow pan. As I actually tilt my aircraft forward it improves slightly and if I actually get a good pace up using alt uh, attitude mode as I am now so hitting about 37-40 miles an hour you'll see that actually it comes down. The other thing to notice is because I am using diversity on the right hand side the diversity is now kicking in and in fact the better antenna at this point in time is in fact the one that is going vertically up in the air and that's because of the fact that we've yawed around. So again it's well worthwhile having, um, you'd be able to do this sort of distance with the 4 channel one with just the dipole and where you mount the antenna and actually the line of sight to it is going to be very key to all of these things. Try and get it as far away from your Manaza as possible, do the dipole mod as demonstrated in this video and you should be able to clear an easy two to three kilometers. Anthony believed I could probably go a little bit further and I think with a different position of the dipole um, I would probably be able to achieve that. Obviously I'm within the constraints of the 5.8 gigahertz but as you can see on the right hand side it made it to 2.2 clear signal. On the left hand side as you see here just as I lowered myself a little bit too low on the horizon I lost my feed simple uh, simple recovery just had to get a little bit of altitude but it was more than capable of doing sort of 2.2 probably 2.5 maybe three kilometers with a clean signal so no problems there all in all definitely a modification i recommend so simple so cheap um, rude not to really um, just do it to your standard antenna don't be uh, too scared of it make sure you get your soldering temperatures and you don't overheat things but as you can see it does uh, does wonders for it and gives you that little bit extra distance